What's going on everybody? In this one we're going to dive into my data from the last event and compare it to previous events to really see the gains that the car has made. The raw lap time doesn't really show the whole story so that's what we're going to get into in this one. The other thing I'll point out is when we dive into the data you'll see why adding downforce to the car doesn't always make you slower in a straight line. Also, if this is your first time on this channel, if you watch some of our previous ones, you'll kind of see the changes we made to the aerodynamics on the car. So some of this stuff might make a little bit more sense, but otherwise, let's jump right into it. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is open up our data from the last race as you can see here and what we want to compare it to is some of our good laps from prior events so if you look over here um, this one this 10-4 on lightning we'll open him up and then I did do a 10-0 or like a 9-9 at a time attack event, um, where is it on lightning? Right here, this this one. So these are my three best laps ever. The previous two, the car was in AI trim, which wasn't really a slouch when it came to arrow. Um, but the new arrow, as you see when we go through our data, how much better the car performed with that. So we'll bring up our measures graph and if you look over here the blue line is the event we just did with the new arrow the red line is an event last year in AI trim and this green line is the event with global time attack now one thing to note is we are on the same tires on all of these roughly the same heat cycles as it just happened to work out as well so tires aren't really a huge factor it's the Toyo RR so first thing to note is how poorly the car was with the new arrow I'm gonna put a link up here of our weekend and you'll see why I kinda had to lift and coast into turn one the splitter was flapping and we didn't really get a chance to fix it so that's why I kinda had to just like get off early coast and that's why I'm losing a bunch of time right here turn one we're all a little similar the AI run up a little bit a few mile an hour um, just kinda got a little bit lucky in that turn right there but you can start seeing some discrepancies here the new arrow again the blue is the highest by a few mile an hour if you look over here it'll show you your mile an hour where the cursor is so right around lowest for all of us the new one I was at we'll call it 75 um, the AI run 69 and then we'll call that about 73 so good couple mile an hour difference there what that tells me is I could have went faster in turn one here I just didn't on this run the rest of the lap is pretty easy um, flat through the back straight uh, hard under braking and over broke a little bit on the AI run here but then this is where it gets really interesting so again these are pretty much the best laps I ever did under my AI trim setup <clears throat> and there's still a couple mile an hour difference between the two so again going back up here we're at 84 and a half 80 but then look what look what I was able to do with the new arrow 92 well I, I guess if we go back to where the technical slowest point is there 91 and a half we'll call it so there's a huge speed increase here and this is where it gets interesting 
that speed ends up carrying the rest of the way down the straightaway. So if you watched any of our prior videos on data, again, I'll put a I'll put a link to the to our data videos up here if you want to get a little bit more into data. So let's take a delta from around about where we start slowing down to basically the end of the lap. And then down here you can see we gained seven tenths on our and on our old AI setup and four tenths on our best lap ever at that time attack event. So the gains just through I'll bring up so here's the track map. Our gains just through this turn were four tenths and seven tenths. So that's pretty that's pretty huge. Alright, so back on our measures graph, one thing people ask me a lot is does adding downforce make you slower in a straight line? And the answer is it kind of depends, and here's why. What we're going to do is bring up our channels report. We're going to do a test compare. So what we're going to look at is our GPS speed maximum. So this is our prior race with the more downforce, more arrow, we hit 134.5 was our best. If we go back a little bit, 134.8 and 133.5. So, even though we have a lot more downforce, the fact that we carry so much more the fact that we carry so much more speed through that last turn carries the whole straightaway the other thing I want to look at while we're in the channels report is our our accelerations so lateral is turning left and right and longitude is accelerating and braking so if we look at our peaks with the new setup uh, negative is left hand turn I believe and then positive is right hand turn so 1.8 on that one 1.6 7 with the old setup and 1.66 so again a clear and obvious increase in grip if we look at our lateral accelerations while turning we can also look at our GPS lateral they're going to be a little bit different how they measure them and depending if you have a solo a solo only gives you GPS based stuff but the Solo DL has an internal uh, gyroscope, I think it's called, that measures it physically. But look, 2.05, 2.11, so over 2 Gs in that turn with the old setup. One point, I'm sorry, with the new setup. 1.8 with the old setup. And this one should be a tad bit lower. 1.78 again with the old setup. So again, both of our data points show a clear bump in grip with the new arrow versus the old. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Hopefully you picked up some tips on how to look at your data to see what kind of gains you're making when you make changes to your car. Again, hopefully this kind of answered the adding down force and straight, straight away speed question. If it was a slow turn coming onto the straightaway, yeah, you'd probably be slower. But if it's a fast turn, carrying that speed, you end up achieving the same, or if it was an even faster turn, a higher top speed. So that kind of answers that question. So as you can see, when we had the three runs up, you can't just quite look at raw lap times because 
certain parts of my old laps I was faster than I was with the new setup kind of like when I had to lift and coast down the straightaway because the the splitter wasn't supported properly stuff like that so that's kind of the advantages of diving into the actual data also if you're interested in a solo or a solo DL I'll put a link to them in the video description below alright guys I hope you enjoyed this one thanks for hanging out and I'll see you guys in the next one Thank you.